misses Robertson a rebound. His putback is up and in. Did what he fires right between the eyes. Come down, down. If you've never seen a Buffalo dance, you will in 2012. The University of Colorado has won the Pac-12 championship. Last year at this time, the Colorado basketball team was sitting in first-year head coach Tad Bull's living room and watching TV as they were snubbed for entry into the 2011 NCAA tournament. They did make a nice run to the Final Four of the NIT in New York City, but that feeling of being left out of the real dance stayed with them during the offseason and into the beginning of this year. The Buffs started the 2011-2012 season with something to prove. Sure, they had compiled 24 wins just seven months earlier, the most in school history, but this team, full of fresh faces, entered the inaugural season of the Pac-12 Conference with their sights set on more. They made it through their non-conference schedule with a quiet 8-4 record, losing only one game inside the confines of the Coors Event Center. On New Year's Eve, Colorado opened Pac-12 play at home versus Utah and unleashed a 40-point victory on the Utes, winning in a landslide 73-33. We should have all taken that as a sign of things to come. In the corner, Dinwiddie again for three, and he knocks another one down. Spencer Dinwiddie with 16. The Buffs battled through the Pac-12 schedule and were 11-5 and going into their last road trip of the season at Oregon and Oregon State. A win on the front end against the Ducks would have secured Colorado a first-round bye as the fourth seed in the upcoming Pac-12 tournament. But back-to-back -back losses dropped Boyle's bunch into a fifth-place tie with UCLA, and the Buffs limped to Los Angeles for the tournament as the sixth seed. 19-11 was not going to get Colorado into the NCAA tournament. They knew it, and we knew it. Something special was going to have to happen, and it began in the first round against, coincidentally, the Utes of Utah. Guys. Nothing else matters for the next two hours, okay? Remember, what you represent, who you represent, okay? Let's, let's go get it done. Come on. Oh, Defense on three. One, two, three. Defense! This is left of the lane. Brown backs his way down against Barr. Steps by him. Scoops it off the window from the left side. That's something good for Carlin Brown. Never gotten a rhythm offensively all night. And uh, so it was kind of an ugly win, but we'll take it and move on. And, I'm really proud of these guys for doing what they had to do. I thought Carlin made some plays in the second half, and, and Andre was uh, was terrific all night. Uh, to the young man from Colorado Perkins, ball is stolen away by Robertson. He drives down court, gives up to Carlin Brown, hangs in the air, kisses it off the window. Got it! A whistle and a foul as the Buffs tie this game up at 14. Three minutes to play. Buffalo's attacking four court right. Booker finds a seam, steps in, jumper over the top of Washford, and the seven footer trying to swap that one away. Still the dribble. Hands the ball off to Perkins. Ball is stolen away from him. Brown down the lane. And a tomahawk jam. Lost a lob pass on the left wing. Tomlinson gets it back inside the Dre. Elevates and dunks as he spins his way by the big fella on the right side out of Dinwood. Spencer drives under the bucket, hangs in the air, kisses that one off the window from the right side. And Spencer Dinwood, he's got. Four. We built this program on defense and rebounding and, and really stuck to it tonight and really helped us you know, throughout the whole game. So without that, we wouldn't have won. It was not pretty tonight, but they survived. And what do they say about the postseason? Survive and advance. We all know we, we will play better tomorrow. We have to play better tomorrow. We know that, okay? Um, but I'm proud of you. The, the thing that we can't do when things are going down is we can't get our heads down and we can't panic. You just got to keep grinding it out. Okay, sometimes you got to grind it out okay, in college basketball. There's a lot of games. Okay. You're the only team, the only team, okay? those of you who were here last year, the only team to win back-to-back -back 21 seasons in 111 years of Colorado basketball history. That's pretty special. Okay? That's pretty special. So I congratulate you for that, okay? um, and, uh, but let's not be satisfied. Let's not be satisfied. Okay, we got four seniors in this room. It's your last go around. Let's make these next two, three, four weeks as special as they can be, okay? And guys, remember, the pain of discipline, the pain of regret. And discipline, you gotta be disciplined to win games like this, okay? And, and, and we did what we had to do. So I'm proud of you for that. Come on, man. Absolutely, we do. Let's go. Get them. Let's go. We're talking about these guys. Here we go. Family on three. One, two, three, bam. bam. in the game, has it ripped, Robertson, 
Gives it up to Carlin Brown, who knocks it down and is fouled. Count the basket. In the 53-41 win over Utah, Colorado did not play its best basketball, but it did play well enough to win. And in the process, got the 20 wins for the second year in a row, making the first back-to-back 20-win -back seasons in the history of Colorado basketball. Andre Robertson scored 20 points and grabbed 11 rebounds, and in the process, became the single-season rebounding leader in Colorado history, and did so in just his second year as a buff. A rematch in round two with the Oregon Ducks was fitting. A dramatic split with the number three seed during the regular season made this rubber match all the more fitting and served as a springboard to one of the most exciting runs in Colorado basketball history. Guys, we have got to be the aggressor for 40 minutes. We're going to take it to them offensively, take it to them defensively, go as hard as you can. If you get tired, let us know. We'll get you a sub, get you right back in there, okay? We need everybody to be in the game. Bench, be ready when your number's called. Come in, give us a lift, okay? Let's go get this guy. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hey, you guys know what we came here to do. All right, get it done now. Come on. Your time. on three. One, two, three, defense. Well, Thomas tries to the paint, gives off. Robertson elevates, flies in, and a tomahawk jam with the right hand. These guys, are, they're here on a mission, and I like the focus of our team right now. Um, but if we can compete like we did against KU in the semifinals last year as a coach, I'll, I'll take that. The tablets on left side. He'll fire the three, and he trains it from left to the circle. And some zone principles that it did when he gives up the paint. The Robertson shovels off the tongues, cutting it to the right side. And a layup is up and good by Shane Harris Hunt. What I want is I want our guys to lay it on the line every night and, and uh, be able to look each other in the eye when they come in that locker room and, and know that they fought. You had two, two teams fighting out there tonight, and I was really proud of the Buffs for coming out on top. Booker penetrates, kick behind at the ball, head fake, drives on lane, spins, leans in, throws it up, shot of the way, Coward, whistle and a foul, Austin the fault. I don't know if I learned anything or not, but uh, I learned that you got to compete this time of year because it's uh, there's no tomorrow. Steal by Booker, down the lane, elevates and slams it down with the right hand. Happy homecoming, Ski Booker. Left side to Carlin Brown. Brown dribbles, fires a three right between the eyes from downtown. Carlin Brown is having a second half as the Buffs have extended the lead now to eight, 47-39. Left of the lane pass, Carlin Brown backs his way down, spins the baseline, step through, scoop shot with the right hand. That is one of the sweetest moves. This one is going right down to the wire. Right side, did what he tries, hangs to the air, shot misses, Robertson a rebound, his put back is up and in. 16 seconds to play, Buffs on top by one. He was trying to attack, you know, and uh, we didn't want to take a jump shot late in the game, you know. Coach Boyle always tells us to attack the rim, you know, and I just felt like when I seen Spencer go, uh, I just crashed the board like I normally do, you know, and it fell right, right into my hands, you know, and got it up. So. It's the ball, play developing, they get it to DeVoe Joseph, Tomlinson is on him, working the dribble, down the two, down the one, fires a long three, painting, it's no good, it's no good, and the Buffaloes pick up win number 21 and advance to the semifinals of the Pac-12 Conference Tournament here in Los Angeles. They'll face the Cal Bears tomorrow night. Holy cow, what a stop at the end and another miraculous victory for the Buffaloes here in Los Angeles. That's how you got to win games in March, okay? And nothing comes easy this time of year, guys. You got to go win it. We went and won that thing. It wasn't given to us. We won it, okay? And what I liked is we got a little soft in attacking the rim, and then we started attacking it there late. The last couple minutes, we attacked the rim, got the ball up there, we crashed the boards. That's what we do what we do. And we won the game how? Defense, Defense. man. Defense. We, this is why you work so hard, okay? This is why you work hard. This is why you go into practice gym late at night or early in the morning. It's why we run the extra 22s, whatever the case may be. We do it for nights like this, okay? And the thing, that, the thing I love is we did it together. Everybody was together, everybody was dialed in, you could just feel it. And we're, we're focused, guys, and we play together, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Hey, listen to me, we're going family on three, one, two, three, family! Hey, get it in here, kid. we're going to believe on three. We've got to believe, guys. Believe on three, one, two, three, believe! Wow. 
A one-point victory over the Oregon Ducks advanced Colorado into the semifinals of the conference tournament for the second time in as many years. CU's final Big 12 conference tournament ended in a third-round loss to Kansas in 2011. This year's opponent was the Cal Bears. The difference was Colorado already had a regular season win over Cal, and they knew how to beat the Bears. We put ourselves in a great position. We're 40 minutes away from playing for a championship. It's not going to happen all at once. It's one possession at a time. Okay? Live in the possession. Don't worry about the last one. Don't worry about the next one. Okay? Play as hard as you can. Leave it on the floor. We come in here, we look each other in the eye, and we know we gave it all, our, all we got. Okay? That's what it's all about this time of year. I heard Nate just say it. This time of year is all about heart. Right here, we got a show. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Come on, boys. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get it on three. One, two, three. Together. So the ball controls. Alvin pass up the left side. Carlin Brown drives in, hangs in the air, kisses it off the window. Contact with Cobbs, but the bucket is up and good. Buffs attacking four court left. Spencer Dinwiddie, top of the key. Over a fallen defender. Fires from 17. Left elbow jumper is up and good by Spencer. Posting up now. Left of the lane against Gutierrez, the defensive player of the year. The Pac-12 spins, fades, fires jumper. Oh, what a sweet shot that time by Carlin Brown. If he's hitting that one, he's unguardable. To the right side. And the Buffaloes control to Tomlinson for three. Right between the eyes. Come downtown. What a start for Colorado. A 10-point lead. I can't say enough about our team. And and, uh, and their toughness over the last uh, two games has really galvanized uh, itself. Uh, Adam and defense applied by Smith. To his left, jump pass in a corner. Robertson wide open, drives in, elevates, and slams it down with the right hand. He was flying through the air. And One thing, again, I, I love about our team is their competitiveness. They're, we got a bunch of competitive guys, and they didn't like where we were picked. And, you know, we don't blame people for doing it. It just... Uh, it, it was fuel and food, uh, you know, for us to, to motivate ourselves. And we've used it as a staff, and I think these guys have even used it amongst themselves. The corner to Tomlinson fakes, blows by the defensive cramp, gives up inside the fault, hangs in the air, contact with camp, and off to the fault, finally knocks one down. Booker of the Buffs attacking four court left. Ski bounce pass right side to fault, crosses over, blows by Thurman, down the lane, elevates, and slams it down with authority with two hands. This team has found its heart here. In in Los Angeles, and uh, we got guys like Carlin and, and Austin, and, and uh, that are that are playing like it. Never been in a position like this. I'm not sure of our school history, but playing for the actual championship is something this school hasn't done in a long time. So we're using that as motivation as well as the uh, the picks in the off season and everything like that. So we were disappointed how we finished the season, the last five six game stretch, because we were right there in the race, but. Now it's just all about one game and one time tomorrow, and we're going to come out and give it everything we have. Nine to 34, 14 and a half to play. Then with left side bounces in a block, nice seal, the ball catch over the top of Smith. He lays it up and in, and Colorado's got a two point advantage. These guys have really responded to challenges at halftime the last couple of nights. And they've been playing with unbelievable heart and desire, and uh, we executed really well, I thought, uh, the entire second half, uh, getting shots and playing with poise. And, really control the tempo of the game. Tunks flips the ball off to Carlin Brown to the free throw line, pulls up from 15, nothing but nylon for Carlin Brown. And we'll see if Brown can start heating up in the second half. Tries to dump it off, flips it outside the arc to Ski Booker. Booker top of the key, open for three, he fires. Oh, what a big time shot by Ski Booker. Oh. Dribbles back outside the arc now, crosses over against Thurman, drives along the baseline, powers it up off the window, and it's up and in for Austin to vault. He's got 10.6 in the second half. He's got a pick to his right, turns the quarter on Kravish, down along the baseline against Cobbs, comes to a jump stop, throws it up with the right hand, it's up and good, Carlin Brown, right now the best player on the court. Well, he tries to turn a corner, down to six, throws it in the corner, default, driving in, goes airborne, kisses it off the window, Cram had to give way. In their first year in the Pac-12 Conference, the Buffaloes will play in the title game against the Arizona Wildcats as they win it at the Staples Center, 70-59. to Holy cow, the run continues in L.A. Obviously, we we found our heart. Okay, this team has found its heart, and I just, I, guys, I believe in destiny. I really do, and I just, I just think we're destined to win this thing because we put ourselves in a position. We've worked so hard all year long. Okay, and and guys, you guys have really stepped up when you had to step up. Okay, we we challenged you last night. Okay, at halftime, we challenged you tonight at halftime. You guys stepped up and met the challenge. Okay, now. 40 minutes away, 40 minutes away, okay? It's not gonna be easy, and guys, it's fitting that 
Coach Brillo just said it. Yeah. Top two defensive teams in the league are playing tomorrow. Okay, we're playing tomorrow for a championship. We put ourselves in this position. I'm so damn proud of that. Go family on three. One, two, three. Family. In the preseason poll, Colorado was picked to finish tenth. Tenth. Now that same team had advanced to the finals of the Pac-12 Conference Tournament where the Buffaloes would meet up with the Arizona Wildcats and the chance at that automatic berth to the NCAA Tournament. It was all starting to come together. Now, all season long, the CU student movement, known as the C Unit, had packed the Coors Event Center. In fact, that group had become a semifinalist for the Naismith Student Section of the Year Award. Athletic Director Mike Bone and his staff decided to reward that group, bringing 50 of the most loyal bus fans along to Los Angeles for the tournament, and that fan support blew everyone away. Basically, Mike Bone decided to um, thank the CU student section and brought 50 of us out here to support the Buffaloes in this tournament. And it's just a big thank you to us for all of our hard work, I guess, supporting them through the entire season. Well, there's really no question that the, the heartbeat of our program starts with uh, the C unit in Boulder and their energy and their passion that they've helped bring to our program. And to have them nationally recognized as one of the finalists for the student section of the year, we thought what better thing to do than to honor them by bringing them along with us out here to California, to really to help bring that same energy, passion, and enthusiasm to our games in the tournament. So I uh, graduated in 2009, helped start the C unit in 2004, and it's definitely taken a whole new level now. Back in the day, I think we maybe had 50 in the first year, then 100, and then it grew by the end, but nothing like it was this year. This year was something special. What a vote of confidence for the students to know that they're, you know, what they do at the games is respected by the university. I think it's awesome that the athletic department brought them out here. It was a great gesture and uh, something that everybody can be excited about. Oh my God, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I mean, it's so surreal. Up until this morning, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to LA, but I didn't really realize it until we got to Coors Event Center. They have the charter buses to wait there for us. Get on the charter buses, go to DIA. You don't have to go to security, and you go to the, uh, you know, the private, private terminal. We get on the charter plane, we fly here. And I'm like, I'm living the life, VIP. This is so cool. This is, I'm so grateful to see you. Thank you, thank you to everybody that made this possible for us. And I know there's so many dedicated fans that didn't get to come, but we're living it up for you guys. All of us have been to all the games, so we know everybody. We all know the cheers. We all know the chants. The songs, the moves, everything's awesome. First thing we did, in and out Burger. We flooded it. Uh, there was 150 people in that restaurant, all wearing black and gold, and they kind of shut down the restaurant just for us. Uh, everyone else who was in there, who's from LA, just left. They all picked up their stuff and just left. We just took it over. It was Occupy uh, in and out Burger. It's a, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for sure, and this is amazing to come out here and support our team. Well, the neat thing about uh, having them with us is it's such a wonderful symbol for our entire institution. It helps everybody understand that Colorado is a wonderful place to go to school with wonderful students' energy, passion, and a, and a sense of pride that is very, very contagious that people can enjoy. It's something that they'll remember for a long time to be part of this, to be able to come out to L.A., um, be able to be part of the Pac-12 tournament, influence the games. It's something you'll remember. It's something very special and uh, very exciting. Driving, spinning, losing, and it's kicked out to Brown. So what can Brown do oh. for you? So oh, man. Little windmill action. Utah, Oregon, Cal, and now Arizona. CU was attempting to become the first team to win four games in four days in this conference tournament history. The traditional powerhouse, Arizona, versus the new kid on the block, Colorado. Now listen, we put ourselves in this position, okay? You guys deserve this. We all deserve this. And all I want to do is be able to come in this locker room at the end of the day, okay, 40 minutes from now, be able to look each other in the eye and know we gave it our best shot. We're the better team, we're the tougher team, we gotta go prove it and make plays. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it done, guys. Come on. It's gonna take a lot of heart, a lot of toughness. Defense on three. One, two, three. Defense. Let's go. 
through these three games thus far. Bounce pass on the block, spinning inside. Default goes up. Shot altered by Hill. Gets the rebound as Default. His putback is up and in. Austin would not be denied. The first shot missed. Grabbed the rebound. Putback. And it's good. Reed fires. Left it short. Andre Roberts to the offensive rebound. Lobs out top. Did what he fires. Right between the eyes. Come down. Down. And the plays the ball up top. Did what he shot. Clock is down to nine. Working the dribble. Now pulls up. Long three ball in the way. Oh, and he hit another one. Did what he back in his hometown. Sam, proud of these guys. is Probably the biggest understatement uh, I've ever made, but uh, you know we beat we beat a great program, a storied program in Arizona. A very good coach in Sean Miller, and, and uh, a good Cal team, a good Oregon team, and a, and a scrappy Utah team to get here. So uh, it wasn't easy, but I'm telling you, uh, before this game, you know we talked about it as a group. Uh, if you believe in destiny, you know you believe in the Colorado Buffaloes because it was meant to be for us. And what these guys have done over these last four days is uh, is something that uh, college basketball is all about. You know, right. him, dumps it inside the phone, the smaller fog, and him turns, hook shot, it's blocked, tip to the air, and Robertson was there to grab it out of the ether and kiss it off the window for two. Andre with his first bucket, bucks on top right three, Robertson to steal, drives down court uncontested, and he slams it down with two hands. Brown backs his way on the left side of the lane against Kyle Fogg. Spins, head fake, fires, jumper. Oh, what a shot that time by Carlin Brown. Off a bounce taken by Booker. Pushes up court, driving by Lavender. Pushes off, flips the ball behind him to Brown. Dump pass inside. Adams, head fake, goes up strong. Layup is up and in. Jeremy Adams has got three, and the Buffs regain the lead by two. There have been so many ups and downs for the last four years, but... Um... You know, I've just treasured every moment at CU for the last four years. Um, the tough ones have only made me a better person along with my teammates. And um, we couldn't have got to this point without, you know, going through ups and downs. And I think that's a testament to our team. And, um, you know, we just came together today and played through ups and downs again and got it done. His way in, nice defense that time. By default, rebound away to Robertson. Up court, Tomlinson against the back backpedaling Solomon Hill to the back end. Scoop shot is up and good by Nate Tomlinson. Side to Robertson with a jab step on Jesse Perry. Fakes between the legs, steps back, fires a three, right between the eyes. Come downtown, Andre Robertson. A jab, a fake, and a dagger from the right wing. The job that Tad Boyle has done in Colorado and what Colorado represents to the future of the Pac-12. I can make the argument that there's been no greater gift to college basketball in the Pac-12 than adding Colorado. They are well coached, play extremely hard, very good on defense. They have talented players now and I feel like they have some really talented players coming in. Dimbledy dribbling up court. He's got room. Down the lane. Bounces off the ball. And Austin could have taken a shot but he saves it. Gets up to Brown. Down the lane! He runs the the corner, down the three, down the two, he's boxed in, he fires at the buzzer, and it's over, it's over in Los Angeles, if you've never seen a Buffalo dance, you will in 2012, the University of Colorado has won the Pac-12 championship, and is on the way to the NCAA tournament, with a 53-51 win over Arizona, here at the Staples Center. I cannot tell you how proud I love you, and here's the deal, guys. We've talked about this a lot recently, okay? This belongs to a lot of people, okay? And we represent a lot of people, okay? And, and former players, okay? We talked about before the game. Javon, Trent, Corey, Levi, Alec, right? Marcus. All six of those guys that were here last year should have been doing this. You did it for them, okay? And every former player that's put on a Colorado uniform, okay? And we're trying to raise the stand of this program. Guys, everybody's going to look to this year's team as that stand. Couldn't be more proud of you guys. They can't take this one away from us. Oh. Our name, our name popping up tomorrow. <laughs> and, and listen, we're not done yet. And guys, we found our heart, okay? And it ain't going away. Everybody, go. Yeah! Good job, guys. Great job. So proud of you guys. Family on three. One, two, three. Family!
With the victory, head coach Tad Boyle is now 9-2 and two in postseason play. In just two seasons, he has become the winningest postseason coach in program history. And his six conference tournament wins, also the most. But if you ask Coach Boyle, the key moment in the victory over Arizona was a realization that his team was about to receive the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. One year after being snubbed, Boyle's team sat in that same living room in his house, again watching the NCAA selection show. This time, they knew they were in. We all knew they were in, but it was still exciting. Coming out of the Mountain West, oh, look at this, the UNLV running Rebels at 26-8 and eight will meet. Coming out of the Pac-12, the Buffaloes of Colorado, seeded number 11. The Buffs won the Pac-12 tournament title in their first season in the conference. Yeah, finally, I mean, that's the word. Um, you know, it's been four years in the making. Um, all the ups and downs and all that stuff, you know, it's... It's validated now with you know winning a championship in the Pac-12, first ever Pac-12 champions, and uh, they're going to the NCAA tournament. So, you know, I couldn't ask for anything else. It's just you know extremely special. We owed it to our seniors, I think, for for all the guys that weren't seniors. They they deserved it the most out of all of us. They've been here for four years and they've been competing. I think they earned it, so it's just that much more special for everybody. It's, it's a great feeling showing up, knowing we're going to be in. That's a that's probably the best part. Um, it's just a great feeling to just be a part of this tournament. I mean, that's what you that's why you play the whole season. It's a long season. That's why you do it, is to get into this tournament and have a shot. So once you're in, you have a shot, and you never know what's going to happen. So that's it was, it was really special. Making the dance is a mark of a good program, a growing program. Back-to-back 20-win -back seasons was a huge step. Winning the first tournament of the new Pac-12 conference set a new standard. But making the NCAA tournament for the first time in nine years says to the Colorado faithful that CU basketball is for real and there's new tradition in Boulder come March. Until next time, I'm Mark Johnson of 850 KOA Radio.